Mr. Fletcher, can you speak? Sure, I can speak. What would you like me to say? Talk again? Yeah. Like one, two, three, four. Testing, testing, check, check, check. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Hello?
Good evening, future grade eights, and welcome to Holy Cross. Uh, we're going to start out by saying we've never done it this way before. Normally, we would have you all in the gym and uh, with your parents and kind of go through what's going to happen. Uh, tonight, we're going to try and do it almost news style. Uh, Mr. Cabralda, the new vice principal for next year, who you'll meet in the fall, is over there behind a bunch of equipment trying to make me look good on camera, which is an impossibility. Uh, Ms. DeSantis is also working behind the scenes for questions later. There is a form to ask questions on there. Uh, we'll approach the questions towards the end because you'll find I'll answer them a lot as I go through the slides. Uh, if you miss anything, we'll be posting this later to the website along with the slides that I'm using so you don't have to worry about forgetting anything and we'll take good care of you not to worry. So without further ado, I think we'll get started. Once again, welcome to the family, and, and that is uh, how we operate at Holy Cross. It's community first, building a, a sense of family and belonging. If you talk to most of our grade 12s, that's what they're going to tell you they love the most about the school, and that's what they miss the most right now in this COVID uh, world that we're living in. Uh, we are established by the Catholic parishes in the region, and that is our first and uh, foremost duty is to operate uh, on behalf of those parishes and obviously as you know a lot of our registration works that way as well and a lot of you are coming from our feeder schools but we also welcome all the, the students that are from parishes in the public schools as well so uh, it's as I say it's welcome to the family we're just getting started and it's a little different this year the school has a strong hist uh, history of service to the community there is all sorts of extracurricular programs, which I'll touch on a bit later, uh, and activities and support programs and fundraising activities, all that goes on as well for under the parent involvement side to try and get parents more involved. As, as I've said in many of the uh, open houses, one of the key indicators of a successful school is parent involvement, and Holy Cross has always, always had that in spades. Uh, the sense of community I've mentioned, and more importantly, most parents want to know uh, is that we have a safe and caring environment. Uh, as I said in the open house, no, nowhere is perfect, uh, but I think we do a pretty good job overall in addressing student needs and student safety and uh, making sure they feel like they belong. And again, a lot of that stems from the sense of community and family that we have and looking out for one another. So. I'll get on to the information stuff. Goals for grade eight. Uh, the number one goal is to establish and build that community early on. Um, that involves establishing a sense of worldview, uh, looking at the world outside just ourselves. And a lot that goes on, I mentioned service activities earlier. A lot of that will be outreach into the community, uh, getting our students to see that, the impact that they can have in a positive way out, outside the school, not just in it. Uh, the service opportunities I mentioned go each grade. So grade eight will have assigned duties in their religion classes, but there are also extracurricular opportunities as well. And as you grow through the school and get into the older grades, there's mission trips and things that we run as well that are, that are a little more involved and you'll hear about that stuff as time goes on, not to worry yet. Uh, number one thing coming into grade eight uh, that we want to build in, in our students is you're leaving elementary. And as I've joked with you before, some of you, uh, you're kind of tired of the elementary thing. You've been there eight years and it's kind of exciting to come to something new. And it's a little bigger, a little more going, well, a lot more going on a lot faster. And you have to take ownership of your own learning and your parents have to let you do that because they're not going to have the teacher walking you to the door every day uh, like they did in elementary school possibly and you're going to be responsible to kind of keep up with your work and, and make sure you're following and you're dealing with more teachers uh, so you're not just having a couple of teachers you, you could have as many as six teachers uh, in, in, depending on your case um, grade eight retreat happens at the end of the first month of course, there's an asterisk around that because if we're still in uh, COVID restrictions, we're not sure how the retreat's going to work. We'll still do something, but we won't be able to do large group activities, obviously. So we are working on a plan. But that retreat, again, is designed 
to build that sense of uh, ownership in the grade, uh, camaraderie, uh, teamwork, trying to you know give you a good start to your year and, and to the whole five years that you're here. And it's been really successful. We spend a lot of time in there talking about growing up in grade eight and the challenges of high school and the things that you'll face and the, the proper ways to approach those. So that's gone a long way to helping us uh, have a smoother uh, year in grade eight and, and more importantly in grade nine and 10 uh, going on, we found it's really been effective the things that we cover in grade eight retreat because the students have a better understanding of the expectations and, and where they can seek assistance or help if you will and uh, how to work through some of the challenges that will come. As I said, it'll be a little different with COVID. Right now, the retreat is uh, scheduled for October 1st and 2nd, and there is a fee for that. And again, you'll get all this information again in the fall, but that fee at the moment is $75 if we do the overnight retreat. The beginning of the grade eight year, there was already questions on there. When things start, how's it gonna work? Uh, well, the standard, I'll go through the standard stuff and then we'll talk a little bit about COVID later. But the first day of school will be September 8th. Uh, that's for grade eights only and grade 12 buddies. So there will be grade 12s here on that day. And that's the Tuesday after the September long weekend. That day is strictly, you guys are the center of the world here and everybody's here to help you find your classes, find your teachers, find your locker, how to use your lock, all those things. And the grade 12s are here to help. And then we do a little pizza lunch with the grade 12s and you go home after the pizza lunch. So it's, it's a nice day. It's only a half day. We don't wanna work you too hard on your first day. Uh, the next day will be a full day. That's the Wednesday. And then the Thursday, which is September 10th this year, uh, it's a little later start, obviously. Uh, this Thursday, September 10th is actual picture day. So we get it all done in that first week. I always get asked about P strip by parents. Obviously your school uniform, you'll be ordering online. You should have got that information with your registration packages. If you didn't, make sure you contact the office in the near future and get the contact uh, information so that you can order your uniform but your PE strip is sold here everybody takes PE and you buy your PE strip in the first couple of weeks or first couple of classes really you order it and pay for it and that's fairly easy and straightforward and they're literally there's parent volunteers in the gym helping you and from there we have I believe it's Wednesday mornings uh, kids can come in and order a replacement part uh, strip or extra stuff throughout the year. So there's always a chance to buy that stuff. Uh, getting involved, I mentioned the, the multitude of extracurricular activities. In the first few weeks, we'll have meetings with the grade eights on how to get involved. Uh, the boys will normally receive letters in the summer about joining football uh, because they'll start before the school year starts often but it's not a problem if you're away, you can start when school starts too. And the same goes for the girls volleyball program. They'll often try and get things rolling ahead of time. It's actually a really great way to meet people early and make new friends and get accustomed to the school and find your way around before things actually get started. Increased participation, like being involved in anything, whether it's sports or music or clubs or activities, which we have lots of as you, you've learned in the past, is gonna make school much more enjoyable for the five years. It's, and st studies even show that kids that are involved tend to be more successful. They tend to be better at allotting their time and, and planning, but it also makes the social part of school go even easier because you're building friends on those teams and clubs and activities. So it's a good way to go. The only thing I have to say, and I keep mentioning it is the COVID thing, because I know that question is gonna come up. What is it gonna be next year? We don't even know yet. Uh, it sounds like it, there will be some limitations as there are now, but again, we don't know. All of that information, we have your contacts, you're part of the school now, you will be getting in the summer when we find out. Uh, we will definitely be having special days for the eights if it's a COVID year um, to better get things started because it won't be as easy uh, as it normally is. So we'll, we will add to that first day for sure getting the grade eights in and getting them started because the teachers don't know who you are yet either. 
so it's a bigger challenge getting a year started, especially for our grade eights. And we understand that. So don't worry about it. Let me worry about that. And we will definitely uh, find ways to make it go smooth. But there will be lots of things in place by then. A day in grade eight, all students have eight classes. Uh, we're, um, we combine our math and science classes and we combine our socials and English. So you have a humanities class and a cymatics class, they call it. That's done for two major reasons. One, to limit the number of teachers you have. So you get the same teacher for a couple of things. It, it also allows the teachers to do more interesting cross-curricular activities and, and keep it a little, a little more fun for you but also fun for them and they can try different things in the classroom. So we've been doing that for a few years. It's been very successful because we've cut down on the amount of teachers our, our kids have to deal with. But because we're a linear school, you have all eight classes all year, which means we run on a day one, day two program. So if you come in on a Monday and it happens to be a day one, Tuesday is going to be a day two, Wednesday is going to be a day one, and it just goes like that all year, even over holidays and weekends and things. So what happens is uh, the advantage to that is if you had math on Monday, you don't have it again till Wednesday. Uh, and if you're playing sports or you're in the music program and you have an event that night, uh, it means you don't have to worry about your homework till the next night. So our kids like that. Semester, the advantage is you only do four at a time for half the year and the other four were not semestered, but kids ask me about it. Our kids like the linear because they're used to it. Uh, semester, the advantage is you only have to worry about four things at once, but you have it every day. So if you're active or you're away for a tournament or a dance recital or something, uh, you can miss a number of classes just by missing two or three days, where in our system you might only miss one or two of everything. So it's, there's bonuses and, and, and negatives to both. Neither is really better than the other, uh, but that's what ours is. You're linear, so you have all eight classes all year. Uh, our classes, I know you'll ask, are 75 minutes long. You have four a day, as I said. You have a 15 minute break in the morning and a 40 minute lunch after block three and then last block and then you're dismissed at 245. So you start at 825, you're done at 245. Uh, grade eight, nine, 10 students can't leave the grounds. Uh, the 11s and 12s can, that's a privilege though and if they abuse it, it gets taken away. So eight, nines and 10s have to stay here. Uh, every grade eight gets their own full length locker. I get asked that all the time. We provide the lock, so you don't have to bring a lock. In fact, you have to use a school lock. There is a hot food service in the cafeteria. It's not too bad. It gets busy, so you want to get there early on the lineups, but it, uh, a lot of our younger kids use it because they can't leave. Uh, the biggest thing with the grade eights on your day to day is your responsibility goes way up. You have way more freedom, you have a lot more, uh, yeah, just freedom and moving around the school and going from class to class. It's not quite as, as strict as it would be necessary in elementary where you're in one class all day unless you go to P or music or something. So you have a lot more moving around, but with that comes a lot more responsibility and doing things on time and keeping track, as I said earlier, and getting where you're supposed to be. There are five minutes between the classes. I know that'll be a question. So there's 75 minute block and then a five minute to get to your next class. And that's lots of time. You could walk around the building probably twice in five minutes easily. Uh, so it's not too bad. For the parents uh, that are new to high school, if, if you've been to high school with kids already, and this isn't your first kid coming into grade eight, then I'm probably gonna repeat some things. But it is a new and different experience in elementary. As I said earlier, a lot more rides on the kids to get memos home and to let you know things. Uh, I'll talk more about home communication later. Uh, but the students must become more independent le leaders. And I've been kind of on this soapbox for a little while now. Uh, if you read anything in the news, they talk about resiliency all the time. And what do they mean by that? Well, it, you know, being able to recover from failure, uh, to make mistakes and learn from them. And in the last several years, that's something we've really focused on with the parents, and it's going really well. Uh, we want to build that resiliency, so we want them to develop their own self-efficacy, to act on their own behalf. Uh, and, and, and that builds on their own motivation and their direction, and all these things are coming from the experts and, and the studies that have been done on education. 
So the more we can build that in kids, the more successful they are, the less uh, prone they are to anxiety and, and all the things we hear about uh, in high schools these days. And they become more responsible learners. They own their learning. And those are terms we try to get the staff to use all the time and want the kids to understand. Uh, but that means you can't come save them all the time. If they forget something, the world won't end. Uh, it'll keep turning. If they forgot their lunch, I promise we won't let them starve. If they forgot some homework, well, maybe it's a good learning experience with the teacher. If they forgot their runners for PE, and we've got that to drop off a lot lately, and it seems to be working. Our kids are starting to take ownership early on. And then in grade 12, when things are getting really serious, uh, they're more prepared uh, for when things go wrong, not to panic. Because if we panic on the little things, Lord help us when the things get tougher. So uh, we want to build, build the resilience when things are a little less important, especially in grade 8 and 9. It, it, one bad mark isn't going to end their academic career. Uh, we've had many, many, many students go through who struggled in the first few years and then kind of got their act together, as people say, going into university and became very, very successful people. And so we don't want to panic too early. And sometimes parents today, you want to jump on that and help them, which is totally understandable. I've got kids, I've done it. Um, but it's not really helping them because we're, we're not letting them learn from their mistakes. And the more studies that come out on this, the more they're saying, let them make mistakes. And, uh, you know, th of course, there's a limit when it comes to safety and things like that. But a lot of the stuff that happens on a day to day ba basis isn't going to change the, uh, the direction of their lives, as we would say. Uh, almost all school information is electronic. Uh, you know, you want to make sure parents uh, very sure that if you're not getting memos or you're hearing about things and you're not getting them, that we do have your correct email because all the, my uh, memos that come home from the office or information along those lines will come through your, the email you've registered at the school. The students also have their own emails, so they'll be getting their own notices and things. But if you feel you're missing things, don't wait. Let the office know right away and have them check the email that, you, that, we, that we have on file for you to make sure you're getting them. That said, we also have many other ways that double up on all that that I'll get to in a few minutes. Technology in school. We are a bring your own device school, uh, which means every student is responsible to bring a digital device. Uh, it has to be a keyboard device so they can't use their phone in class. I'll get to that in a minute. We recommend Chromebooks. We have Chromebooks in the school to loan in case kids break or drop or forget theirs. They can come up to the Learning Commons and actually book one for the day when they need it. Um, sometimes we run situations where families have a lot of kids and having three or four Chromebooks is expensive. So uh, sometimes those families will make arrangements with us uh, to borrow, uh, uh, but we don't do that for everyone. We couldn't, there's just too many kids. So that's really limited to, to families in need. But the Chromebooks are fairly inexpensive when it comes to buying them. Uh, I tell parents this time every year, get your eye open for sales. Uh, there, you can usually get them in the two, $300 range fairly easily. They don't have to be super fancy. They don't need a MacBook Pro. They don't need an iPad. A Chromebook will do everything they're being asked to do in class. And we are a Google Suite school. So we use Google Classroom uh, and all the other platforms that come with it. They get a Gmail that's a Holy Cross named account, but it actually runs through the, their Google Suite. All that's controlled at the school so we can check for abuses and all those types of things. But the most important piece of that is, is again, they're, they're, they're pretty bulletproof and pretty cheap because they can't load any software on them. And that's a lot of the times where you're going to run into problems. So we've had very, very good success. And to be honest, 99% uh, of our parents are super happy right now with what's going on during COVID because we were more prepared than some places because we were a Google Suite school. Our kids were very used to using Google Classroom already. So it was, wasn't as difficult as it might have been to switch to online. And it will be a very important part of the fall if we end up having to deal with some sort of mixed uh, or blended education system because of COVID. And it certainly looks like that's a strong possibility. Uh, we'll keep praying that that's not the way it goes. If students abuse any of the electronic or digital, they can lose privileges. So there are rules and uh, 
a behavior uh, contract that they'll sign at the beginning of the year. They'll be part of their classes. That'll all get sorted out. As I mentioned, they're not allowed to have cell phones in class. They're supposed to be either turned off, out of sight, or locked up safely in their locker. As long as they're not seen, no problem, but if they bring them out in class, they can be confiscated. If a teacher has to confiscate more than once, it'll generally come to the office. And if we have to talk to them more than once, we'll probably call you and hold on to them for a while, which for the kids is like losing an arm. So generally that works. School home communication. Uh, as I mentioned, we try to communicate digitally as much as possible now. Uh, it, it's just, Easy, more efficient and most of our parents now are, are, are very up to speed on what we're doing. It also saves a lot of paper that generally we would print notices of all kinds and after teaching in high schools for a long time now, uh, most of those notices we would find in locker cleanouts halfway through the year or at the end of the year. So a lot of trees died for no good and parents still weren't getting the notices. So a lot of we do, we try to double up so that parents can find it easily. Uh, we have over 800 students, there's over 650 families, so please check some of the things I'm about to mention before calling the office. Uh, it's not like the, our, some of our small elementary schools, the secretaries are trying to get through stuff, so it's really important that we kind of follow uh, a protocol or procedures to, to ease everybody's workloads and make it possible for us to get information out. We have a school app uh, that sends out all sorts of push notifications when things are happening. Everything from exam changes to snow days will be on that app. Uh, you can download that app at most app stores for Android or, or uh, uh, Apple. Um, you just type in Holy Cross Regional High School, all four words. Again, this will be on the website later and you, it should be the first thing that comes up in the app stores. If you have any trouble just let us know we have a, a website you know about that because you found this tonight so a lot of stuff will be posted there the website's been updated in the last few months so it's all new and we're still working on that so it's still a little bit under construction the students have a portal as well that's linked to the website uh, for a lot of the work that goes on in the building mycrusader.net and their emails are tied into that we have a Twitter at Daily Crusader. We have Instagram at Crusader Connect. We also have multiple other Twitter and Instagram accounts, but those are the main uh, information accounts for the school. Like music and athletics will have their own just for specific for their kids. Emails from the office I mentioned to parents and the student emails I've mentioned already. So it's really important that in all cases, you should be able to find it in more than one place. Uh, you, you hardly never, ever need to call into the office to find anything. Usually we've got stuff up before the office ladies even know. Supports for learning. Uh, Ms. DeSantis put this up here. She, she's the other vice principal. Uh, she's been overseeing our learning support department for a long time. Uh, we have a large learning resource team. There are three teachers and herself that are overseeing it. Uh, as of today, their team has met with all our feeder Catholic schools already. So they've worked to transition students that were working on IEPs from our feeder schools. Most school students with a ministerial learning designation will receive a learning support block, depending on the recommendations of the team from the elementary school or the school team here. Other supports we have in place uh, will include peer tutoring, in the math program, general tutoring, subject tutorials, homework clubs, things like that. Students coming us from local public schools with learning designation parents should contact Mrs. DeSantis and her email is adesantis at holycrossbc.ca. It's on our website and again this uh, slide will be posted to our website later. So that's it on support for learning. I'll, I usually get questions at the end of, t of tonight because it's live and we're in the gym but most of the questions are just who to contact and if you have any questions on learning support get, let Ms. DeSantis know and she'll point you in the right direction and uh, go from there but usually it's just who you know who's for support any of the kids coming from our schools we should have taught to talk to sorry already uh, parent inquiries I mentioned the number of families and how many kids we have so it's really important in the high school that, that, that people kind of follow things a little bit differently. I was the principal at a small elementary school for a while and parents were used to just calling the principal all the time. 
<laughs> it's not that I don't want to talk to you, but please don't. There's too many. Uh, if you have an inquiry regarding a concern in class, the diocesan policy, not just ours, uh, is to check with the teacher first. And that's pretty standard fare. If there's something happening in a classroom and a student comes home with a concern, let the teacher know and, and they, will, they will get back to you and let you know the other side of it. Uh, if you've talked to the teacher and there's still some confusion, and let's say I'll use math again, it's in a math class, and you can also talk to the department head at that point to see if that's a department-wide thing or what the philosophy is, et cetera. Generally, again, if you email a teacher or department head, you should give them up to 48 hours. The email's not instant messaging, so if you send an email, don't expect them to get right back to it. Um, but we, our rule of thumb is about 48 hours. If they haven't answered you, try again. And if they still haven't answered you, then let us know in the office and we'll, we'll prompt them. You can also call in and leave a voice message. But as, over the last few years, uh, emails become 99% of how parents are communicating with teachers. Concerns with teams, if it's an athletic team, you talk to the coach just like a teacher and if you can't get a hold of the coach or there's an issue, then you can talk to the athletic director, Mr. Lachasser. If it was in a music class, same thing, or a music event, you go directly to Mr. Cabralda or Mr. Sinse, who by the way, Mr. Sinse is also helping us with this presentation tonight. Uh, ultimately, if there's still concerns after you've approached all these people inappropriately, uh, had conversations with them, then you would come to the vice principal, and then I'm kind of like the last step if things were really a problem. So most of these procedures you'll find in our student parent handbook, which again is updated every summer and posted to the website with any changes to the rules. Furthermore, on inquiries, if you have academic concerns or your child's struggling, each grade has an advisor. We call them GLAs or grade level advisor. The grade eight advisor is Mrs. Calendino. Again, you don't have to memorize that. It will be on this. And you can see the GLA and a parent can contact the GLA if they have a concern. And the GLA's job is to kind of coordinate and liaise with all the grade eight teachers. And so if uh, a student might be struggling in one class, they're gonna go talk to the other classes to see if it's a trend. Um, and, and then how can we intervene to help them? And that might end up involving Mrs. DeSantis and the support network that we have there or other people that we have. We also have social counselors, um, three that work uh, multiple days a week. None are full time, but they overlap. So we usually have two here a day and they're dealing with more personal issues with kids. Uh, and parents are also free to contact the counselors. And again, all of this is on the website and you can let the counselors know if you have a concern but normally the students will come and ask for appointments to help and that could be anything from a loss in the family uh, we have a lot of kids with stress with the covid situation they don't like being at home so they busy the counselors have been very busy through this actually just giving kids uh, strategies to deal with those type of anxieties uh, we have a regional education committee. Most of the people from our uh, feeder schools would know it as a parent education committee, or sorry, parish education committee, PEC. It's an REC here because we're more than one parish. It works very similar. There are parents, two representatives from every parish that sit on that. Their job is to oversee uh, policy is being implemented from the diocese the, and the, the operational budgets and things and capital of the building. So they also, what would fall under their uh, authority would be things like tuition and fundraising. So if you have concerns in those areas, you would approach them because I don't have the authority to change anything there. And contacting them is also available on the website. If there's an issue with uniforms or a complaint or a dissatisfaction, you can also approach them. They oversee the uniform. And uh, as I said, they work with the Catholic independent school uh, directives that come down from the diocese. So their overall job is to do those things. That's the bulk of my slides, or that is all my slides. I don't want to keep you here too long tonight, uh, especially in this format online. Uh, I'm sure we have some questions that are on there. I don't know how many I've answered already. But the big thing is to relax, uh, to not panic. There's nothing you need do over the summer special. You don't need to go buy a bunch of books or, or things. You will need some binders. You will need some paper. You definitely need some pens and pencils. 
Uh, the rest can wait till you've met your teachers because again, you're dealing with multiple teachers, they'll have different things, but the bulk of it's gonna be paper and notebooks and, and again, having a Chromebook or something that works that has to have a keyboard. Uh, as far as prepping academically, it's a little different this year because the elementary schools have been closed as well, although everybody's starting back up in some way, shape or form June 1st and that's varying from place to place. So they'll be letting us know if there's any deficiencies or things that haven't been covered. But the good news is the math in grade eight and, and some of the other areas, there's, there's enough repetition from grade seven that generally grade eight's designed to make sure everybody's on the same page anyway. So it should not be a, a big concern or stress for parents or students. Relax, we will make sure you're okay. Um, there's not a lot, as I said, that you can do in advance that's going to change anything uh, or prep. Uh, you know, parents ask me all the time, what can we do to get ready over the summer? Well, if, if you want, there's all sorts of math stuff online you can do to practice if you want to make your kid do math all summer. Reading is still one of the best things you can do. Um, the kids that read well uh, have less trouble getting through some of their homework because they're reading and comprehending faster. It's just common sense. So you can do very simple things to get ready. You don't have to do anything special. It's it, again, grade eight is set up very much to get everybody on the same page. Uh, yep. So Mr. Cabralda on my left here behind all the equipment is saying he has questions. So go ahead. Okay. Yes, so we don't know yet, as I said, how school is going to resume. That's going to be up to the ministry. We don't get to overrule that. Uh, we'll do whatever's safe for our staff and students and make sure everybody's okay. Uh, it's a very serious disease, and we want to make sure nobody gets hurt in a rush to get things going again. But my, my understanding right now is it will probably be some sort of blended face-to-face uh, -face with some online learning. How we're going to set that up, we're still discussing. So it's too early to, I don't want to say anything and have to backtrack. We will have a plan and there are contingencies we're already developing, yes. Um, I think you answered the how do you order school supplies. Yeah, school supplies is not like elementary. You don't have a set school supply. It will vary depending on electives and all sorts of things. So really all you need to do is catch the sales on loose leaf paper and binders and set yourself up there on pens and pencils and you'll probably be you know 75 80 percent of the way there if you take an art class they're going to have specific things they want if you take music there's going to be things you need so it's going to vary depending on what each kid is taking but for their general classes most of them are using binders and and notebooks that's it um do we have a boys soccer team we do not have a boys soccer team. We have girls soccer in the spring and boys football in the fall, girls football, uh, sorry, volleyball in the fall. Uh, the only reason we don't have boys football is space, time and coaches uh, because the high school soccer season is during the fall and we already had football there years and years ago before they really got going with high school soccer. And to be honest, um, high school soccer and, and like hockey is so strong in the community uh, we're never going to compete with the with what they do there so i'm not even sure what we would do if we lost football yet so for now it's football and volleyball the boys have uh basketball in the winter uh, boys have lacrosse and then everybody has uh track and field uh, swim, team. swim team tennis golf ultimate. ultimate so there's a lot to do um the question no, I don't think so. The only thing they do full-on tryouts for really is uh, basketball and volleyball are the only two sports that I know of that cut. Uh, girls soccer sometimes because they have too many. Um, but generally, it's just those two because the teams are so small, like in basketball and volleyball. So those are the toughest ones to get into. Football never cuts. Track and field never cuts. Now, there's qualification issues. You could be on the track team and not qualify for some meets. Uh, same with swimming uh, and, and golf and things like that. But golf, tennis, they're pretty much open invitations to everyone. So we have a lot. The only two that really cut are volleyball and basketball. Parent volunteering? Is that 
Parent volunteering is covered in their registration package, so they should have seen that in there. There is a required number of hours. I'm trying to remember what it is right now. Um, it's, not, it's a lot less than the elementary schools, I'll tell you that, because we have so many families, we don't need to overburden them. And uh, generally, I, I want to say it's 15 or 20. I'm, I should have it in front of me, and I'm sorry I don't. Yeah. But it sh it'll be in the reg package that you filled out. Oh yeah, so if you go to Holy Cross, uh, was it YouTube? Uh, YouTube.com slash Holy Cross News. YouTube.com slash Holy Cross News. News. A lot of things get posted there like this, and you can find a lot of information in those places. 12 to 15 hours for volunteer. It's 12, it's, I think it's 15 now, but 12 to 15 hours for volunteer to that last question. Any more questions? Again, we don't want to keep you too long. Thank you to everybody who did show up. I should have said that at the start. I know it's a little different. Uh, any friends that missed it because of it, whatever, uh, you can let them know we're going to be posting this so they'll be able to watch it back anytime they want. Uh, and then again, the slideshow will be on there as well. Any new questions? Right now, we don't have volunteer hours because we can't have people on site, although that's slowly changing. So with the changes as of June 1st, as the province goes into phase three, I think we're in. Um, I'm getting the phases confused. Uh, I think it's phase three we're in. Uh, as things loosen up a little bit, then that stuff will come back. So to answer the question for fall, I don't know because I don't know what the restrictions will be yet. Uh, hopefully we have a great summer and the numbers and, the, and as they say, the curve is flattened and everybody's listening to Dr. Uh, Bonnie and, and, and doing their thing and, and being safe and we can come back in September to a, a close to normal situation. I don't think it'll be 100% normal based on what they're telling us, but we'll see. But either way, we'll try to do as much as we can to, to smooth it out for grade eights and parent hours and things like that. There'll be lots of memos and, and we'll be doing a AGMs online if we have to, just to keep parents in, in, in the know. And we'll do a lot more of this kind of thing. This is a little new to us. So for me, it's very weird talking to this camera with nobody behind it, uh, other than Mr. Cabral over there playing with all the toys or, that he has. I think that's all our questions. So once again, uh, welcome to Holy Cross. I know this isn't the way we wanted to start uh, either, but trust me, we'll make it work. And I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and you're gonna enjoy your five years here. Stay safe and uh, take care of each other and look after your families and make sure you're following all the rules. And we'll see you soon. All the best and God bless.